right? So what do they call you? Zhou Yu. I'm here to aid you, my friend. Today is the dawn of a new age, right, Zhou Yu? Yes, it does, Sun Se. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Night Out Channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming at number 11, closing off our list before we hit the top 10 characters, we have the handsome Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu is the famous military commander who protected his lord's territory from Cao Cao at Chi Bi. A reputed warrior talented in war and literature, Zhou Yu's potential was feared by Cao Cao and Liu Bei. He shared a devout fellowship with both Sun Se and Sun Quan. He was practically tied to the hip with the elder brother and he acted like a gentle older sibling to the younger brother. Roman to the Three Kingdoms fabricated his jealousy for Zhuge Liang, in which he was constantly vexed by his counterpart's intelligence, and Zhao Qiao is his wife. Before we jump into how one of the most handsome men in the game has changed within the series since his Playboy debut back in the first Dynasty Warriors games, one of the original characters of the series, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Mr. Zhou Yu himself is up here at number 11. In the first popularity poll, consisting of about 75,000 total votes, we have Zhou Yu coming in at number 17 with 1,399 of those votes. In the second popularity poll, Zhou Yu is going to drop down to the 30th position. And then in my personal ranking, Zhou Yu almost breaks the top five for my list and comes in at number six. So for me personally, Zhou Yu is at number six for me because Zhou Yu is one of my all time favorite characters in this game. The main reason I like this character is because of his weapon style that he was given from Dynasty Warriors 6 and on. It's one of my favorite weapon styles within the game. It's super fun to play as, and it's one of the few styles that I actually use on my created characters in the Empire's versions. I've always been a fan of stabs and spears and just like two-handed weapons within the series because they've always seemed to have a really good attack pattern, a really good move set, and I always seem to gravitate towards characters that have this type of weapon because it just felt fun. I just really enjoyed using this style. Zhou Yu has a really cool move set with the staff, and when we get to his weapon style, we'll dive deeper into his weapon style. So for me personally, that's where the main draw for the character comes from me, and that's why I love the character so much. Super fun to play with, super fun character. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Zhou Yu for people who don't know, and then we're going to jump into all of his changes since his Playboy debut back in the first Dynasty Warriors game. So like I said, Zhou Yu was a Chinese military general and strategist serving under the warlord Sun Tzu in the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. After Sun Tzu died in the year 200, he continued serving under Sun Quan and he is primarily known for his leading role in defeating the numerically superior forces of the northern warlord Cao Cao at the Battle of Red Cliffs. Zhou Yu's victory served as the bedrock of Sun Quan's regime, but unfortunately he did not live to see Sun Quan's enthronement because unfortunately Zhou Yu would succumb to illness. Zhou Yu was a calm and rational expert of strategy who was capable of seeing through most of his enemies' ploys. He was a darker and slightly more arrogant character in his first appearance, but it has softened in the following titles. He treats his allies with modest professionalism and genuine respect, and his devotion to his homeland is unquestionable. His talents are praised with renown, and his perceptive nature is unsettling even to Zhuge Liang. So Zhou Yu is one of the most important characters in the Wu Kingdom. He is like the original strategist for their kingdom. He's like the first generation of the strategist for their team, at least within the game. And Zhou Yu would end up garnering a lot of respect from all of his comrades and 
from people outside of his kingdom as well. Zhou Yu was described to have a strong physique and handsome looks. Within the game, Zhou Yu is nicknamed the Handsome Zhou Yu, and he was known to be a magnanimous and generous man who won the hearts of many people with his character. However, there was one person he could not get along with well, and that was Cheng Pu. Within the games, they start out having a pretty rocky relationship, but it eventually smooths over after Cheng Pu sees the value that Zhou Yu brings to the kingdom. We'll dive deeper into all of his relationships towards the latter part of the video, but Zhou Yu was an outstanding strategist and military general for the Wu Kingdom. He played a very pivotal moment in one of the biggest battles of the era. Again, Zhou Yu is a very integral part to the Wu Kingdom, and he plays a very big role in the early construction of the Wu Kingdom. Sun Quan is even quoted to have said after Zhou Yu passes away and he creates the Empire of Wu that he would not have gotten this far if it wasn't for Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu is a very interesting character and the character didn't really become a favorite of mine until about Dynasty Warriors 6 and on. That's when he got the staff like I mentioned and that's when he kind of changed his demeanor as a character as well. I would say Zhou Yu within the earlier games was less charismatic than he is in the later games. And while he still had the friendship with Sun Tzu and it was always highlighted within the games, it really didn't develop until Dynasty Warriors 6 and on. That's when they really started to develop that deep friendship that Zhou Yu and Sun Tse have. But Zhou Yu's been one of my favorites since Dynasty Warriors 6 since he got the changes. And since we're already talking about it, let's go ahead and jump into Zhou Yu's changes because he's got a bunch since he is one of the original characters of this series. And we're going to go ahead and start off with Zhou Yu's appearance. So Zhou Yu's appearance within the game is relatively good. I don't have much to complain about it. He definitely goes through a change from Dynasty Warriors 5 to Dynasty Warriors 6. In terms of like the way he looks, physically what he wears is pretty much the same it's pretty much a robe or like a light armor kind of look with the red pattern to match the woo colors but his look in terms of his clothes has remained relatively the same and i don't have really too much to complain about that but physically like his face or like his hairstyle or like the, his body he looks a little different from dynasty wars 5 to dynasty warriors 6. my favorite look for Zhou Yu is probably going to be dynasty warriors 5 or dynasty warriors 6. again he became my favorite in dynasty warriors 6 so i might be a little biased to that i did not like him in dynasty warriors 7. the hair just looked it just looked a little weird like he didn't look good as he did in some of the previous game dynasty warriors 8 was a little bit better and i think they do a really good job in dynasty warriors 9. but his look for me is actually pretty good in most of the games i think it fits him as a character just personally didn't like Dynasty Warriors 7. That's probably the least favorite of mine. But all the other styles and looks that he goes through is not that much of a deterrent for me. If anything, it's more of the weapon style that he had. Like in the earlier games, I guess we'll just jump right into its weapon style. In the earlier games, he has the sword. And within those games, I think it fit him pretty well. It was very unique. It was a very unique sword style. It wasn't cookie cutter or copied from like any of the other warlords. He had a very mobile and majestic kind of style. So instead of having a big, like for example, the the third charge attack on most of the characters is for like an AOE for more of an explosive attack to get people away from you or to like knock them back pretty far. But for Zhou Yu's third, you had to connect with his attack or else it wouldn't work. So for him, he would jump in the air and then like he would slice one way, he would turn over, slice another way. And if you didn't connect on the first or the second one, he would just stop. So you wouldn't get that explosiveness and knocking them back, which would make you susceptible to getting hit. And you know, he was a very skill based kind of character. You had to really get used to the way he because it was very different than all the other sword users but i can't complain too much about it i thought it was pretty fun his running attack was always really cool you can just swing and slice through a bunch of people now in dynasty warrior 6 i think he gets the best weapon for him which is the staff so the staff for zhou yu one of the best weapons that i've used within the games it's really fun to play with it's super powerful the aoe is really good it's got a very good you know range attack because the weapon's so long and i just i've always liked the staff it's one of my favorite weapons to equip on my created characters and especially like Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and I think they took it out of 9. I, they had the same move set, but there was no arrows being fired down. So his EX attack in Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, uh, he would jump up, he would slam down, and he would like call upon arrows to follow his attack to do tons of AoE damage. One of my favorite EX attacks in the game, you could literally just use that attack over and over again and just stay in an invincible array of arrows and not have to really worry about the enemy. So for me personally, that's why the weapon style is so fun to me because I just like his EX attack and I just like the benefits that the staff gives you over some of the other weapons. And then his Musao attacks with the weapons was pretty good. The staff Musao attacks was a lot better than the sword ones, but the sword ones are pretty good as well. It was a very small Musao attack, you know, it was very good for one-on-one situations. But even at the end when you expect like an AoE, 
He just had a very simple one where he kind of just hit them up and it was a very small cone instead of a wide AOE. It was a very small range versus some of the other sword users. But it wasn't too bad. The sword Musao's were just average, wasn't anything too crazy. But the staff Musao attack was really, really good. Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, it wasn't as good as Dynasty Warriors 6 and Dynasty Warriors 9. I believe they took Dynasty Warriors 6 and they combined it with a Dynasty Warriors 7 or Dynasty Warriors 8 one. His Musao attack in Dynasty Warriors 9 was awesome. It was really really good. His regular Musao attack was really, really cool, and it's among one of my favorites from that game so far because it incorporates the staff's strong points. You know, he kind of imbues it with fire, and he has the range and does a bit of damage, but then he ends it with an AoE blast, which is similar to the Dynasty Warriors 6 one, which is really, really cool. Really powerful, really cool to use. I really enjoyed that Musao attack, and like I said, in general, the staff is just, it's one of my favorites. And it will always be one of my favorite movesets within the game. I'm moving on to his voice acting. So his voice acting in most of the games is pretty good. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 2, 3, 4, and 5. He gets a different one for each of those games. And it's relatively okay. Dynasty Warriors 2, you can't really count it. But he does have a little bit of voice acting in there. You mean this. Dynasty Warriors 3, he also gets a different one. South Eastern Wind. Jukai Leon. A devil. And then Dynasty Warriors 4, he gets another voice actor, which takes a little bit of a different turn. My blade shall dance you to your grave. And then in Dynasty Warriors 5, I think they tried to kind of mimic the same one from Dynasty Warriors 4. Men, this river shall guide us to our future. And out of those, I thought they were okay. I didn't like Dynasty Warriors 4 as much. Uh, he seemed kind of stuffy, you know, like he just, I, I don't know, I didn't really like the Dynasty Wars 4 voice actor that much. Dynasty Wars 3 was really good, came in really clear, really smooth, and then Dynasty Wars 5 was also kind of good as well. The best voice actor for him is Dynasty Warriors 6 through 8. Soon say, we made an error. Maybe we should have tried to defeat Cao Cao back then. The same guy voices him in all those games. He did a great job with Zhou Yu. Definitely my favorite for him. And then in Dynasty Warriors 9, I believe they go back to the similar style to like Dynasty Warriors 3. Sun Tzu has momentum. He also has the ability to draw people to him and inspire them. Which I thought fit him pretty well. I, it's not as good as the previous one, but it still fit him okay. I couldn't complain about the voice acting too much. I liked most of the voice acting for Zhou Yu. I think it fits him pretty well, but the Dynasty War 6 to 8 one is my favorite voice for Zhou Yu. It just really fit him as a character, really brought him to life. And again, really building on that relationship with Soon Se was always really fun to watch. But can't really complain about the voice acting too much. Now we're gonna move on to the chunkiest part of the video for, for Zhou Yu. We've got the significant battles, we got his relationships, and we got his death. All right, so starting off with Zhou Yu significant battles, He's got a few significant battles, but not too many because his roles within the game is pretty short because he dies kind of early. In some games, you know, hypothetically, he does go a little farther. But the main ones we're going to talk about is the Conquest of Wu, Chibi, and the Battle of Nanjun. So the Conquest of Wu was really important for Zhou Yu because this is the battle where Sun Tzu and his forces unify a land under his name. It's very important for Sun Tzu and of course for Zhou Yu as well because he's seeing his friend bring his dream and vision to fruition. Zhou Yu's there to help guide him in that process and, and get him as far as he can in order to bring a land of peace under their name. But he didn't play like a super significant role or anything within the battle. He was just there for support. He has a couple cutscenes where he comes in and Sun Tzu's morale goes up like, hey, you know, I'm so glad to see you. Let's finish this up. Let's win this. And it is a semi-important battle for Zhou Yu to be there and help see his friend succeed in that manner. Now moving on to his most significant battle within the series, we have the Battle of Chi B. So probably the biggest battle within the games, one of the most important battles in the game is the Battle of Chi B. Cao Cao versus the allied forces of Sun Quan and Liu Bei. So this is where Zhou Yu really steps up and becomes a prominent figure within the Three Kingdoms. At this point in time, people already knew who he was. He was already pretty famous and well known and he, you know, had a quite a bit of accolades already on him. And But this was the battle which, at least within the game, separated Zhou Yu from being just a, you know, really good strategist to being one of the best of his time. So the battle of Chi Bi was on the banks of the Changjian and it was an extremely important battle which ended up in a victory for the much smaller Sun Liu alliance. Now originally Sun Quan did not want to go to war with Cao Cao. He was on the fence of whether or not you know he should surrender or he should resist. Now initially Lu Su is the first person to tell Sun Quan hey we should resist them. So Zhou Yu returns from one of his trips or a battle or something. He returns from somewhere basically gives him the advice that Cao Cao has no experience 
on the river his troops his units they are a mix of different people so it's not a cohesive military unit and then with you know winter approaching and you know them not being accustomed to the changes in the climate they had another good advantage over them like Zhou Yu was making him aware that Cao Cao wasn't as invincible as he was making himself to be at that point in time. And because of this, Zhou Yu was able to successfully convince Sun Quan to resist Cao Cao. Now also with bringing in Liu Bei and of course the sleeping dragon Zhuge Liang, Zhou Yu and Zhuge Liang are able to put their heads together in order to come up with a plan to take down Cao Cao. And that's where the infamous fire attack at this battle comes into play. It was a plan that was created by the officer Huang Gai and Zhou Yu is usually the commander at this battle that is making sure everything is going smoothly. After Cao Cao's forces get set ablaze, it results in a very easy victory but it was a very significant battle because at this point in time at this junction this now allowed Sun Quan and the Wu forces to really take their time and really start to develop where they wanted to go which kind of leads right into his next battle and his death so Zhou Yu was seeing the opportunity to really expand out because Cao Cao couldn't really do anything because he had to recover all the losses that he had. So originally, at least within history, Zhou Yu was planning on attacking Yi province, the place where Liu Bei actually attacks and sets up his base and everything. Zhou Yu was actually planning to attack that first, but ends up passing away before he can do that. Now within the games, I believe he doesn't attack that area specifically. He attacks, I believe, Cao Cao's forces in a place called Nanjun. So the last battle we're gonna talk about is the Battle of Nanjun, and we're also gonna talk about Zhou Yu's death. This is usually the battle where he dies or he dies after it. Most of the games cover him getting hit with an arrow. So within history, it was also said that he got hit with a stray arrow and he had to retreat due to the wound. But after he sustained that injury, he would succumb to that wound, he would succumb to illness, and he would end up passing away. A lot of the games have a cutscene around or some sort of event of Zhou Yu being injured because when Zhou Yu gets injured and inevitably passes away it is a huge blow to the Wu Kingdom because again someone of that caliber passing away on their side is a huge blow to the Wu Kingdom. Sun Quan and a, and a ton of other people mourned his death because he represented and meant so much to a lot of people within the Wu Kingdom. He was a very integral part to that kingdom and like I already mentioned he was one of the main reasons Wu even became a kingdom in the first place because of his strategies and guidance that he gave to Sun Quan. Now moving on to his relationship the last part of the video we're gonna go ahead and start off with his most significant relationship within the game with Sun Sa. So him and Sun Sa are like brothers. These two are really, really close to each other. And it was actually true within history as well. They were really good friends, even from when they were like really little. I believe it was said that Zhou Yu, you know, when he was younger, you know, his family would invite the Sun family in and they would stay over. It got super close to the point where Zhou Yu was even really close with Sun Sa's mother. And you know, he was treated like a brother with, you know, Sun Sa and of course Sun Quan. But they were really, really close all the way up until Sun Sa's death. I really, really like Zhou Zhou Yu's story in Dynasty Warriors 6, of course it's hypothetical, it's not true, it's not gonna happen, but it's really, really cool to see that. Zhou Yu does anything and everything he can for Sun Tzu, believing in his vision 100%. Even after Sun Tzu passes away, he still has that feeling of, I'm going to push as hard as I can for Sun Tzu, always referencing him. I liked his ending in Dynasty Warriors 5, that one was really cool, you could hear his voice talking. He's just doing everything he can for his friend. Very, very close relationship with Sun Tzu, one of my favorite duos within the game. Always love seeing the you know, two polar opposites kind of come together. You know, you have Zhou Yu, the calm, collected strategist who thinks ahead, and then you have Sun Tzu, gung-ho warrior who's there to throw down with the best of them. And seeing those two come together and really be close, I've always enjoyed that relationship. Now moving on to his relationship with Sun Quan, similar relationship with Sun Tzu, but instead of like two brothers, I mean, they were still brothers, but he was more of like an older brother, an older brother slash mentor to Sun Quan. So he had a similar position in that he was guiding Sun Quan with making the right decisions and coming up with strategies and plans to deal with the upcoming battles. And so Sun Quan will rely on Zhou Yu for a lot of like what to do in, in his early, you know, reigns as the leader. So when he first became a leader, Sun Quan will rely heavily on Zhou Yu to, what should I do? Should I, you know, how should I approach the situation? How should I approach this problem? And Zhou Yu was the person there making his job a lot easier, guiding him in the right direction. And of course they had a very close relationship, not only because of that, but because of the background and the history that they already had together. And of course, Zhou 
Yu being so, so close to Sun Se. And Sun Quan probably looks up to Zhou Yu as an older brother, you know, someone that he cherishes and respects. And then the next relationship I want to talk about is with Sun Jian. So he had a relationship with all three of these characters because he was like part of the family. I'm sure Sun Jian looks at him as a son. They have a pretty good relationship in Dynasty Warrior 6. They really marinate that relationship a lot more in that game. It's evident in some of the other games as well. Dynasty Warrior 5, there was a good moment with them. But he had a good relationship with Sun Jian up until his death. I'm sure he believed wholeheartedly in Sun Jian's vision and what he wanted to bring to the land. Now moving on to his relationships with the two other strategists within the kingdom, we have Lu Su and Lu Meng. So Zhou Yu again is like the first generation, the original strategist of the Wu Kingdom, and when he passes away, he passes on his knowledge and all of his responsibilities onto these two characters. So Lu Meng and Lu Su look up to Zhou Yu as a leader, as a you know master, as a person that they want to become like. And he has a close relationship with both of these characters. He wants to pass on the knowledge as much as he can, especially when he realizes, you know, of course, getting hit with the arrow and realizing that his journey is coming to an end. He wants to pass on, you know, his fire, his will, his guidance, everything that he can so they can carry on the will and the legacy of what has been built so far. Now, moving on to more minor relationships within the game, his most significant minor relationship is going to be with Xiao Chao, and that's because it's his wife. You know, he has lots of cutscenes with her. They have a pretty good relationship with each other, and I, you know, I, I like relationship. Xiao Chao was always there to make sure he was, you know, okay and supportive of what he was doing. And it's always good to see a good relationship between a husband and wife. Now moving on to his relationship with Cheng Pu. I kind of mentioned it earlier. So these two had a very interesting relationship in Dynasty Warriors 9. Overall, I would say it was a good relationship or it turned out to be one. In the beginning, Cheng Pu was very reluctant to take instructions from Zhou Yu because he deemed he was too young. He wasn't worthy. Cheng Pu had the mindset of like, you know, I'm an older veteran. You can't really tell me what to do. You don't know what you're doing you're not thinking things through or it's all in your head or whatever it is Cheng Pu had a lot of resistance to Zhou Yu being the one commanding him and eventually at some point I believe it might have been after Sun Se's death when the young Sun Quan took over right I think that's when Cheng Pu somehow saw in Zhou Yu this magnanimous ability this charismatic leader like quality that Zhou Yu developed and Cheng Pu began to really understand that and be okay with it. He understood that this was the next generation of the Wu Kingdom. He began to accept Zhou Yu was a very talented person. And he possessed a lot of good things for the Wu Kingdom. And then once that happened, Cheng Pu and Zhou Yu became very close. And Cheng Pu's ending, you know, this is after Zhou Yu passes away, he's really missing Zhou Yu. So it's really, it was really cool to see that. And they had a close relationship. Of course, it wasn't the greatest in the beginning, but they had a close relationship eventually. And then when Zhou Yu passed away, it really affected Cheng Pu. Now, his last two relationships, we have Huang Gai and Zhu Ge Liang. So Huang Gai, uh, very good relationship with him. Zhou Yu had a lot of respect for Huang Gai. He was a veteran. He came in with Sun Jian. Huang Gai was there to really support Zhou Yu, whatever it was, in order to help the Wu Kingdom move forward. And then with Zhu Ge Liang, they have an interesting relationship because he's aware of Zhu Ge Liang's abilities and talents. I wouldn't say he was like intimidated or scared by him, but he was very weary of Zhu Ge Liang's abilities to think ahead. And of course, in Dynasty Warriors 9 and some of the other games, as well when Zhuge Liang makes the move into Jing province before the you know battle of Chibi is even over Zhou Yu is completely astonished and shocked like I didn't even see that coming but I would say they both acknowledge each other's abilities Zhuge Liang even I, I would say respects Zhou Yu but yeah they had a pretty interesting relationship they had a good relationship at Chibi in a sense you know making sure that they can do what they can to defeat Cao Cao because if they lose I mean both of their kingdoms come to an end right there there's no more three kingdoms it's over you know I would say they had a respectful relationship towards each other like they respect each other's abilities but i don't think Zhou Yu ever trusted or really liked zhuge liang that much but that's pretty much all i have for Zhou Yu here the most handsome character in the game let me know what you guys think about him down below he's a character that's always going to be a favorite of mine because of his weapon style like his voice acting is great his appearance is good but those aren't really big draws for me his personality isn't really a big draw for me either i've never really was drawn to his story i was always drawn to his weapon his weapon was always super fun to play when when he shifted into the staff when he had the sword he was a character that i never really looked into if he still had the sword he would be lower for me he wouldn't be in my top 10 but because of his weapon style and then of course having that relationship with sun sa sun sa being my favorite character and just seeing that brotherly relationship and him doing everything he can for sun sa is also going to raise him up in terms of me liking him but yeah that's all i have for joe you here guys let me know what you guys think about him down below one of the greatest strategists of this time he plays a very big role within the series so let me know what you guys think about him down below do you guys like him did i miss anything all that good stuff let me know down below but that's all i have guys and i'll see you guys in the next video if you enjoyed it definitely appreciate it like comment subscribe and i will see you guys later thanks for watching everyone